This is the SP005 from Paris Roan. It is a 4K UHD projector. Its output resolution is 3840 by 2160p, so native 4K. It costs $699 as I record this video, and that is a bargain because just a few years ago, you'd have to spend thousands of dollars to get native 4K out of a projector. Now you can spend hundreds of dollars, okay? So that is a bargain. Now it can fill a screen anywhere from 60 inches all the way to 200 inches, so it will work in a home theater. It can do front projection or rear projection. It can sit on a table like it is here, or it can be mounted to the ceiling. So all of the different mounting options and configurations that you would do with a projector, you can do here. Up front, you've got the lens under this lens cover right here. And then right next to that is an IR sensor because it does come with a remote and you will need to hold on to this remote because all of the functions are controlled by the remote. There is a power button up here, but that's pretty much all it does is power. The remote is what you need for all of the functions. Okay. Now there's also a IR sensor back here on the back, along with two HDMI 2.1 ports, two USB ports, a three and a half millimeter headphone jack, a USB-C port, and the main power connection. Now, a couple things about this. There are two speakers on this particular projector one over here and one over here, and they actually sound pretty good for a projector. I got a chance to listen to them while I was looking at content via the Android 9 system that is built in to this projector, okay? It's got Android version 9, so you can access all of your favorite content, including Netflix, YouTube, Amazon Prime Video, Crackle, basically everything, you can access it via this particular box, but you will have to listen to it on the speakers because as I record this, those two HDMI inputs do not feature audio return channel or enhanced audio return channel. I did ask Paris Ron about that and they said they are planning a future firmware update so that will be available here, but it's not here now so I wasn't able to test it. I had to watch content on Android 9 using these speakers. Now, like I said, they work for projector speakers, but you do have one issue the fan noise, okay? This does produce fan noise, and so you have to turn the volume up via the remote to actually get over that fan noise. And once you do, it's okay, but it does have fan noise. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna cover up the lens here, and I'm going to turn this on, and I'm gonna let you hear what the fan noise sounds like. So I'm gonna be silent for a second so you can see how silent this room is, then I'll turn it on. So it's going to stay at that volume pretty much all the way through. And when I measured this, I was about two feet away. I measured my room was right around 44 dB, but once I turned this on, it went up to about 51 dB in the room. So it does get a bit loud. So you wanna make sure that this is mounted on the wall, or at least it's away from your main listening position because the fan noise will get to be a bit much if it is close to your ears. Another feature I like is automatic focus and automatic keystone correction. When you turn this on, it will zoom in and out until it gets itself in focus, and then it will find the borders of your screen and fill up your screen. Now for me on my 100 inch screen, I didn't have any issues with it whatsoever, focusing or keystone adjustment, but you can manually adjust those if you want to. I tried them, it works, but quite frankly for me, automatic work perfectly and I didn't have to worry about it. All right, now let's talk about my experience with this projector. And I wanna start a little bit with audio, or at least continue, I should say. I did plug this into my main system, the Denon AVR-X4400H as my AV processor and my uh, monoprice monolith amplifier with my speakers, uh, the Arundel Sound 1723S. I was using an Apple TV 4K and the Magnetar UDP 800 uh, 4K Blu-ray player as my video. And I have to say that is the best version of this because again, I've got my full surround sound with Dolby Atmos overheads and the big screen, best version, okay? So from an audio standpoint, you definitely want something better than these speakers. They're good for projectors, but a better system will obviously sound better. Now, from a video quality standpoint, those sources, the Apple TV 4K and the Magnetar UDP 800, um, the video quality is gonna be the same as what I talk about with this setup that I have right here. So I'm not going to add anything to it. So I'm going to move on and talk about my experience with the Amazon Fire TV Cube and my Panasonic Blu-ray player with disc, because I assume that's how most people will be watching this projector. 
Android 9 works in this projector. It's nice and fluid. I was able to download all the apps and watch my content, but I assume most people will be plugging in another device like the Fire TV Cube, the Apple TV 4K, Roku, and a Blu-ray player or Kaleidoscape or something like that to watch content. The first thing I noticed with the Amazon Fire TV Cube was when I was watching movie content, the projector went into 24 frame per second mode at 4K. So that meant that everything looks cinematic in that I had the reflected image and the right frame rate. And the image itself was nice and sharp because it was 4K. So I was happy about that. Now, Paris Rhone does give us some rudimentary picture control. So we can adjust things like hue, saturation, contrast, just different little things like that, which is nice in the user picture menu, but it doesn't give you everything. So you can't totally dial this projector in, but it will do okay. And what I found when watching bright images, let's say Cars 3, that the colors are nice and bold and sharp, and it's actually pretty pleasing to the eyes. But once I moved on to content that was a little bit darker, like The Dark Knight or even The Tomorrow War on Amazon Prime, at the end, they're going into this cave to try to beat the monsters one last time. And inside that cave is dark. I could see the snow. I could see the actors' faces, but I really couldn't see anything going on in the shadows. So I thought, hmm, it doesn't resolve the shadows as much, but it could be an issue with using a streaming media box. So let me move on to a disc. So I moved on to my Panasonic 4K Blu-ray player, the UB820 that I have right here. I put on Jurassic Park because that's a movie I know pretty well. And in chapter 12, when we first see the Tyrannosaurus Rex and he actually eats the goat, there's a couple of kids and a lawyer sitting in a car and there are a lot of shadows. So I watched that scene. And again, I thought it looked a little bit dark. So I adjusted the brightness on the projector and also the contrast to see if I could get a little bit more of shadow detail and honestly I didn't really get that much so I turned on the HDR optimizer in this player and I put it in the natural setting and that did clear up some of the shadows so I could see a little bit more of what was going on in the shadows but I will say that particular setting and turning that on goes against director's intent because it does boost the HDR brightness just a little bit okay so that was something that I could do with this particular player but that's not something you can do if you a don't have this player and you're just dealing with this projector so I will caution you with this projector if you watch a lot of movies with dark content there will be times or even tv shows there will be times where you can't see all of the details that's happening in the shadows now that brings me on to HDR and specifically HDR 10. This projector can output up to 500 nits of brightness, which is enough to give you an HDR 10 image, which means it uses static metadata. And this projector will do that. I watch different content and it does give you some additional brightness with HDR content, which is a good thing. But Paris Run also says it will do HDR 10 plus. So I tried it on the Amazon Fire TV Cube with 7500 Air and and the Tomorrow War, and honestly, I couldn't get it to enable. So again, I went back to my 4K Blu-ray player, along with some 4K movies that are in HDR 10 Plus, including 1917, Fast 9, The Fast Saga, and also Robin Hood, all in HDR 10 Plus. And I couldn't get it to enable HDR 10 Plus. So I grabbed the latest Spears and Munsell disc to find out what the capabilities of this projector are. And what that disc told me was it is capable of HDR 10, but not HDR 10 Plus. So I was like, hmm. Then I decided, you know, let me do one more check. I went to the menu system on the Amazon Fire TV Cube so it could tell me what this projector was capable of. And again, it said HDR10, not HDR10+. So then I reached out to the representative at Paris Rune who sent me this, and she said that it will do HDR10+. I verified I had the latest firmware, and I couldn't figure out a way to do it through the menu system. So I cannot say that this projector will do HDR10+. The specs say it, the representative say it, but I can't say it because I couldn't get it to enable it for any of the things that I tried here. Now, I will say this, this projector does work with the lights on. I did watch television and movies with some lights on just to see how it would work, and it does work. But is it a better experience when the lights are off? Absolutely. One other thing I tried with this projector is upscaling DVD content, going from 480p to 2160p, and it does work. But I will say at this price point, it doesn't have the best upscalers in the world. Does it work? Yes, but is it the best? No. 
So overall, I am happy that Paris Room gives us a native 4K projector under $1,000. In fact, I'm going to put a link in the description below so you can purchase this projector for $550, at least as I record this. I can't promise you that deal is going to go forward in perpetuity. So click on that link and get it while you can, or at least get the best deal that you can on this projector. It will definitely give you an image from 60 inches all the way to 200 inches, and it will be nice and bright. You can watch it in a room with the lights on. Now, once it moves into the shadows, it doesn't resolve shadow detail as well as some other projectors. So you may not, you may miss some things in the shadows. And like I said before, I can't confirm that it will do HDR 10 plus, but again, it is a great price for a native 4k projector. So I want to thank Paris Ron for sending me this projector. If you guys have any questions, drop them in the comment section and I will try to answer them again. Don't forget to click that link. Thank you guys for watching. I'll talk to you next time.